If you're ever in a jam Here I am If you're ever in a mess Just S.O.S. If you ever lost your teeth and you're out to dine Borrow mine It's friendship, friendship Just a perfect friendship When other friendships have been forgot Theirs will still be hot La, 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 big, big, big something to sing about. They can sing about it maybe because they haven't any friends. But I'm singing the blues about it because I got a friend, my friend Irma. <laughs> the Columbia Broadcasting System presents a new comedy show, My Friend Irma, starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. Friendship is a thing that's been around all through the ages. Like measles. That's how it's been with my friend Irma. I love that girl. Most people do. It's just that Mother Nature gave some girls brains, intelligence, wit, cleverness. But with Irma, well, Mother Nature slipped her a Mickey. <laughs> Gee, you know, I'll never forget the first time I met her. I was walking along looking for a place to live in New York, and by a strange coincidence, I am having a very tough time. And I keep bumping into people, and I keep saying I'm sorry. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, please. Excuse me until I... Oh! Oh, excuse me. I just never look where I'm going. I just keep walking with my head held high, just like the doctor told me, and taking deep, deep breaths, inhaling and exhaling like this... And keep counting to myself, one, two, three, four... Look, honey, four. will you stop counting long enough to help me up? Oh, of course, you must be very uncomfortable on your knees. Oh, no, no, not at all. I love it down here, if I was Al Jolson. <laughs> Did you see that picture, the Jolson story? I just loved it. I just cried, cried, Fine, cried. fine. Now, would you please help me up? Oh, certainly. Here, give me your hand. Oh, thanks. Oh, my, what a lovely ring. Uh, you know, my boyfriend, Al, was going to give me one just like that. We had it all picked out, only you know what happened? It wouldn't fit your nose. <laughs> well, it wasn't for my nose. It was for my finger. It wouldn't have fit my nose. I wish it had. I could have pulled myself up. <laughs> oh, you want to get up, don't you? If you please. I can't make much time crawling. I can't either. I always walk. Well, here we go. Upsy daisy Oh, careful of that dress. <laughs> we ripped it, didn't we? <laughs> yes, yes, we did But you know something? They're wearing split skirts in New York this year Yeah, sure, but not all the way up to the neck <laughs> No, it's too bad they're not wearing split heads I uh, Say, we haven't been introduced yet My name's Irma, what's yours? Goodbye What an unusual name, what's your last name? Forever <laughs> That's pretty Oh, Irma That's when I should have run But I didn't Instead, I moved in with her In that one-room furnished freight elevator She called home uh, Jane, the telephone's ringing Jane, the telephone's ringing Aren't you going to answer? I don't know if it's for me. <laughs> well, take a chance. It's not your nickel. Hello? Yes, yeah, she's here. Jane, it's for me. Irma. <laughs> you know, if Marconi knew you were going to use the telephone, he never would have invented it. Jane, I'm surprised that you, Alexander Graham Bell, invented the telephone, not Marconi. <laughs> you see? I'm beginning to think like you. <laughs> Gosh, everybody knows that Marconi invented spaghetti. <laughs> Irma, the telephone. Oh, hello? Al! Jane, it's Al. Well, what are you waiting for? Run down to the police station with the bail. <laughs> oh. Now, don't be silly. He's not in jail. Hello, Al? Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Irma, you're the only girl I know that talks on the telephone in Morse code. <laughs> okay. Okay, Al. Goodbye. 
Jane, Al's coming over. Oh, honey, why do you have to spoil our Sunday by having that no good, broken down, phony windbag over? Jane. Yes. What's your opinion of Al? <laughs> I like him. I like him. I think he's a live wire, and it's just a matter of time before they hook him up and put a chair under him. <laughs> Wrong, Jane. Al's a gentleman. Why, last night he took me to the movies and afterwards we had a soda and before he said goodnight he returned what was left of my two dollars. <laughs> Al has a good heart. If he has, he stole it. Jane, please don't pick on Al. He's just as good as your Richard Rhinelander III. was my blood pressure rising. She would mention his name. You see, Richard Rhinelander III is my boss, and I'm his private secretary. I'm in love with him, but I have no chance to marry him because he's Richard Rhinelander III, and I'm Jane Stacy I. <laughs> I've tried everything. I told him I lived in a very intellectual atmosphere and that my roommate is a promising young novelist. Oh, Stacy, you fool, you. If he ever finds out how you live and what a mental midget Irma really is, you've just got to end up stone cold dead in the market. Gee, gee, I'd love to marry him. Irma, Irma, wouldn't it be wonderful if I wound up being Mrs. Richard Rhinelander the third? The third? What good is that if he has two other wives? <laughs> I won't even stop to answer that one. <laughs> Gee, I couldn't marry a wealthy man and go out to the opera. I don't know a thing about Shakespeare. <laughs> Honey, with five million dollars, all you gotta know about Shakespeare is that he's dead and you're alive. <laughs> oh, well, let's forget Mr. Rhinelander. I'll never marry him, because, well, there's the difference in family. His ancestors were Mayflower people. Gee, they made all that money out of donuts? <laughs> Irma, if you say another word, I'll scream. Well, if you do, you'll wake up Professor Kropotkin, the violinist downstairs, and he needs sleep. <sighs> Irma, I I'm going in and take a bath. Uh, Jane, honey, don't use all the hot water. This is the day we wash the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Who did you want to talk to? Jane? Who's this? Oh, Mr. Richard Rhinelander. Well, Jane's busy. Uh, do you want to hang on for about 20 minutes? Uh, yes, this is Irma, her roommate. How's my book? Oh, I finished it and I'm starting another. Hard on me. No, you know those giant comics are mostly pictures. <laughs> oh, I I'd like to meet you too, Mr. Rhinelander. Say, I've got an idea. Why don't you dash over for dinner tonight, huh? Uh, oh, it's no bother. Oh, we'd love to have you. And by the way, if it's not inconvenient, bring some donuts. <laughs> uh, remember, see you at 7.30. And don't bother to dress. It's strictly au gratin. <laughs> now, who could that be? Come in. Hiya, chicken. How are you? Hello, Al, honey. Gee, I'm glad you came over. Didn't think I could make it. Took time off from three deals that were just simmering. Dying to burst into flame. Stuff like stucco bathtubs, scratch while you bathe. <laughs> Tremendous projects. Well, Al, what happened? Nothing. But there was a lot of action. A lot of action. Oh, oh, Al, you're always talking business. Come over here a minute, honey, and look in my eyes. What do you see? Murine. Now, there's another great moneymaker. <laughs> Wish I had thought of that. Al, you're just so full of business. Gotta be. Gotta have a lot of action. Well, here we are. Start acting. I gotta leave, kid. Got a big deal brewing. Gee, Al, if we had money, you and I could settle down on a little ranch. I can see it now. The egg and Irma. <laughs> Hiya, Jamie. What's the good word? Jane, Al's got a big deal on. And what a deal. I just happened to line up no less than $100,000 worth of surplus army goods. Gee, Al, what kind of surplus are you going to sell? Rip cord. <laughs> Ripcord. Oh, this is a big deal. I got a pajama manufacturer lined up to take the whole lot of them. 
I even got an advertising gimmick with these ripcords. Listen to this. You get up in the morning and bail out of your pajamas. <laughs> you like it? I don't know how I ever lived this long without it. Yeah, that ain't all. This is a big, big promotion. You take a two-page ad in life showing a picture of a beautiful girl ready to retire. And underneath the caption... Hit the silk. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, how'd you know? It figures. I think it's wonderful. Well, gotta go. A lot of things popping. You know, Jane, I'll work so hard, but I just know that someday I'll have a lot of money. Even if he has to print it himself. <laughs> Don't you worry. Don't listen to her, kid. Stick with me. Someday when one of these actions pans out and I'm on top. Someday when the chips are in. Good night, he... Stella Dallas. <laughs> Irma, can I see you in private for a few seconds? Sure. You know, chicken, I'm in action. Al, it... I can't lend you any more money. Irma, what are you doing with your money? Spend it on yourself? <laughs> well, you know I wouldn't be foolish enough to do that. I, it's just that I'm throwing a dinner party tonight. Dinner party? Yes, I've invited Jane's boss over. Uh, you know, the millionaire uh, Richard Rylander III? Huh? And she's crazy about him, and I thought an intimate gathering would bring them together. Hey, you know, Irma, if a guy like me, with my ideas, met a guy like him with his dough, there'd be a lot of action. <laughs> well, then by all means, come over tonight, Al, and bring your ideas. Baby, I'll be here. I wouldn't miss it tonight for a warehouse full of furs guarded by a deaf watchman. <laughs> Irma, has that crumb it... go... Oh. Just leaving now. So long, ladies. See you later. Honey, be careful going home. There's a crime wave on. Yes, Al, keep your hat turned down. You don't want to get picked up. <laughs> <laughs> you fracture me. So long, chicken. See you later. Jane, isn't he cute? You know, honey, you ought to get wise and forget about Al. Well, I... Jane, I've got a surprise for you. Uh, you know who's coming over for dinner tonight? Richard Rhinelander III. Oh, wonderful. And I'm Margaret O'Brien by a former marriage daddy canter. <laughs> Come in. Oh, Jane, it's Professor Kropotkin. Come in, Professor. Hi, Professor. <laughs> Jane, isn't it cute the way Professor Kropotkin only talks through his violin? Yeah. Take your hat off, Professor. Are you going someplace? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'm sorry. We can't go with you. Would you change your mind, go to the fights tomorrow night? <laughs> Professor, did you get your new car yet? Oh, I see, yeah. Still taking the trolley, huh? Gee, Professor, I think you play the violin wonderfully. Uh, have you ever thought of going on the radio? Gee. <laughs> Gee, I think he plays much better than the great Gildersleeve. <laughs> What's the hurry, Professor? Do you have to rush away? Oh, Christmas shopping, huh? Well, so long, Professor. <laughs> Isn't he a wonderful man? Yeah, he certainly is. But I still can't get used to shaking hands with his bow. <laughs> Irma, honey, how'd you like to see a movie tonight? Oh, I can't make it, Jane. I told you, we're having a guest for dinner. Who? Richard Rhinelander III. Oh, well, that's fine. Richard Rhinelander III. Irma, I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to answer yes or no. Did you invite my boss to come to our apartment for dinner tonight? Yes. Oh, Irma, how could you? Well, it was very simple. He called up and asked to talk to you, and you were busy, so I invited him. Oh, no, no. Th this is all a dream. And after dinner, Al's going to drop over, and maybe we can persuade Professor Kropotkin to come up. No, this is a nightmare. <laughs> Give me that phone. Maybe it's not too late to stop him. Hello? Hello, is Mr. Rhinelander there? He's not? Could you please tell me where he went? Oh, he left to go to a dinner party at a Miss Jane Stacy's. Thank you. Jane! Jane, what are you doing? Nothing. Just writing a suicide note. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, Richard Rhinelander III is coming to dinner. And now I am really trapped. Because I told him that I lived in an artistic neighborhood and that my roommate was a budding novelist. How could I justify having him sit around with that scintillating trio of conversationalists, Irma, Al, and Kropotkin? (laughs) Rhinelander is expecting an evening based on table talk a la information, please. What he's going to get is people are funny or it pays to be ignorant. (laughs) Well, anyway... Finally, 7.30 rolled around. The bottle of martinis is catching a chill in the icebox, and I'm running fever in the living room. Well, Rhinelander would be arriving in any minute, and Irma wasn't ready. Uh, Irma, it's 7.30. Oh, thanks for reminding me. I gotta tune in on the Easy Aces. (laughs) Irma, aren't you giving a dinner party tonight? Yes, I was just getting into my dress. How do you like it? Don't you think you ought to get a little further into it? (laughs) Al likes this dress. Al would. (laughs) But Rhinelander wouldn't. Now, come on. Come on, you've got just time to waltz this broom around a couple of times. Come on. Okay. Irma, no, no, don't don't sweep the dirt under the rug. No, the man downstairs has been complaining. Complaining? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you know, that hole in the floor. (laughs) Jane, I have a wonderful idea. Why don't we take the rug off and then with a hole in the ceiling we'll have cross ventilation? (laughs) Oh, Irma, listen, I'm so nervous. Oh, don't worry, I'll handle everything. Haven't you any confidence in me? Oh, well, certainly I have, honey, but I think I'll take my bicarbonate before dinner. Now look, Irma, let's let's not be nervous, huh? No, let's let's just take it easy, you see. First we serve the martinis, and then... I don't have to drink a martini, do I, Jane? What's that got to do with it? I'd rather have milk. Well, how can you drink milk when we're drinking martinis? Well, I know. I'll drink milk, but I'll put an olive in it. (laughs) Irma. No. No, he's here. He's here. Now, listen to me, Irma. I'm not worried. Not a bit. I got confidence in you. I I know you'll do everything right, because if you don't, I think I'll kill myself and then you. (laughs) You ready? You ready, okay? Irma, put the broom away. Come in. Hello. Does Jane Stacy live here? Oh, good evening, Jane. I didn't recognize you for a moment. (laughs) That's because you didn't take the curlers out of her hair. How silly of me. Uh, come in. Uh, come in, Mr. Rhinelander. Uh, may I present my roommate, Irma? Oh, how do you do? Hello. Irma, would you mind taking Mr. Rhinelander's hat? I can't. Why not? His head is still in it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Here it is. Irma, now that you have Mr. Rhinelander's hat, would you mind taking broom away from him? Oh. <laughs> Irma, now that you have the broom, would you mind taking Mr. Rhinelander's hat away from her? Oh. Uh, won't you sit down, Mr. Rhinelander? Oh, thank you, Jane, but you don't have to stand on formality. My friends always call me Richard. Oh, thank you. Cigarette, Richard? Thank you. Uh, match, Richard? Thank you. Ashtray, Richard? Thank you. A cigarette, Irma? Thank you. A match? Thank you. Ashtray, Irma? No, thank you. I don't smoke. <laughs> Oh, you writers are all alike, witty and eccentric. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I knew you'd like Irma's wit. It's so, uh, so natural. <laughs> yes, I noticed. My, what a charming apartment you have here. And when will the remodeling be finished? Remodeling? <laughs> remodeling, this is it. <laughs> yes, yes, it's small, but, uh... Our neighbors are so interesting. Uh, artists, writers, musicians. For instance, uh, there's a very famous violinist who lives downstairs. He's uh, Professor Kropotkin. Kropotkin? Kropotkin. Uh... Yeah, he plays in the Paradise Burlesque. Have you ever been there? <laughs> no, I, uh, I don't think so. Well, it doesn't matter. You wouldn't have seen him anyway because he plays the violin under the runway. <laughs> yes. 
Yes, a lot of our neighbors are eccentric, but they're all artistic. Now, I know what you mean. A charming environment. Yes. You know, it's hot in here. I think I'll open the window. Hey, Mrs. Flanagan, did you hear the news about Johnny O'Toole downstairs? Last night he came home roaring drunk, staggering up the stairs. <laughs> Shall we go in to dinner? If I live to be the oldest woman in the United States and Canada, I'll never forget that dinner. It started off with Irma taking from the right and serving from the left. She also did a little dropping in the middle. Mr. Rhinelander, Mr. Rhinelander looked very fetching wearing a hamburger over his right eye. <laughs> then we got to the dessert, and it seems Irma had put the dessert in the wrong tray in the icebox. The first time I'd ever tasted cauliflower sherbet. <laughs> well, <laughs> so much for the food. The conversation was a monster in its own right. <laughs> Richard said... Uh, uh, fortunately, I've been able to travel considerably. Uh, Irma, do you like to travel? And Irma said... Oh, yes, it's really the only way to get any place. <laughs> well, finally it was over, and we decided to have our coffee in the living room. Well, Jane, that was an excellent dinner. Wonderful food. Oh, well, that's nothing unusual. We always have food for dinner. <laughs> Irma, you have a priceless wit. I can only agree with you half of the way. <laughs> you know, Mr. Rhinelander, I envy Jane working for you. Oh, yes, the investment business can be exciting, but I wish I had more time for sports. You do love sports, don't you, Richard? Mm-hmm. Fortunately, I've been able to find some time for squash and badminton at the athletic club. Oh. Personally, I love golf. It's such an exciting game, and yet it's so simple. Yes, but tennis has a dash of that... Same excitement. Uh, I swim, ride horseback, play tennis, bowl, and shoot pool. <laughs> Irma, do you really do all those things? No, but I have to keep up my end of the conversation. <laughs> more, uh, more coffee, Richard? Uh, no, thank you. Oh, I think you're wise. Coffee does keep one awake. Yes, coffee does have that effect on me, uh, how about you, Irma? They got an awful lot of coffee in Brazil. <laughs> Irma, we know you're in the conversation, dear. Just take it easy. <laughs> well, okay, then. I think I'll open the window. No, Irma, don't. The window, no. And the next night, Johnny O'Toole comes home again, rolling drunk, staggering her up the stairs. Hey, hello. <laughs> it's uh, chilly out tonight, isn't it? <laughs> Isn't it, Richard? Come in. Oh, hello, Professor Kropotkin. I'd like you to meet Richard Rhinelander III, Jane's boss. How do you do, Professor? <laughs> I, uh, beg your pardon? Oh, you see, Richard, Professor Kropotkin believes that music is the soul of expression, so much more eloquent than speech. Amazing, amazing. Oh, he's a wonderful man. However, his wife didn't understand him, and recently they were divorced, and now he's free again. Uh, isn't that right, Professor? I, uh, I can't get over that man. A very unusual talent. Just think, expressing himself through the violin. Well, let's get down to business. When are you two going to get married? <laughs> Oh, Irma, how could you? Richard, I I really don't know what to say. Oh, uh, I... Irma, I, I'm very fond of Jane, but uh, of course there's my father. Your father? Let him get his own girl. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Irma. Come in. Hi, you both. What a surprise. <laughs> Look, Jane, it's Al. The next sound you hear is Jane Stacy blowing her brains out. <laughs> Al, I'd like you to meet Richard Rhinelander III. Uh, Richard, this is my boyfriend, Al. Uh, how do you do? Hiya, Rich. Heard a lot about you. 
Uh, Al, you know Professor Kropotkin. Why, sure. Hiya, Professor. Why must that guy always give me an eight-bar hello? <laughs> I bet his mother was scared by Rubinoff. Ha! Richard, wouldn't you care to go to a movie or something? Oh, no sense in breaking up the party. Let's sit around and chew the fat. Rich, what's new on the street? The, uh, street? Yeah, you know, on the exchange. A lot of action these days. Well, cotton was a little slow this past week. Uh-huh, knew it. What about steel? It's a little old. I knew it. Richard, you can see for yourself the handwriting's on the wall. Really? Yeah, but it's not too late. You gotta get out of Wall Street. I do? Absolutely. Well, sure, you could plug along, make it a million here, a million there, but have you got security? <laughs> well, uh, hell, you see. Yeah, but uh... don't let it bother you because there's a place for you in my organization. Uh, Richard, let's go to a movie. No, Jane, let him talk. The whole thing may develop into a merger. Merger? You're right, Irma. Rich, I'm gonna make a big man out of you. How would you like to team up with me? Well, I, uh... Well, it's hard to make a decision like this at a moment's notice. Now, listen to me, Rich. Here's the plan. We've a chance to corner the market on surplus rip cords. <laughs> I can see it now. Al Industries Limited, featuring Richard Rhinelander III. We'll go out the open market, buy short, sell long. Why are you Evening's going just like I planned. The boys are in there getting along beautifully. Mm, beautifully. Richard reaches for his wallet. He'll shake hands with Al. <laughs> now, Jane. Oh, now listen to me, Irma. You've ruined me. I should never have moved in with you. But Jane, I... don't. But Jane, me. But I thought. I that... don't care what you thought. You've ruined everything. Imagine his coming from his mansion on Park Avenue to this dump and meeting all these crazy people. And now to top it off, your boyfriend Al wants to make a partner out of him in a mythical business. But, Jane, Al's only trying to fix it so that he has security. <laughs> Irma. <laughs> Irma, listen to me. I've got news for you. Richard Rhineland of the Third has five million dollars he hasn't even counted yet. Well, now that I'm ruined, I'm going back in there, apologize, quit my job, and spend the night at the YWCA. But, Jane... Another thing. The next time we meet on the street, I only want you to say one thing. Goodbye. Will General Motors go for it? Why, Richard, their tongues are hanging out for ripcords. Yeah, well, Al, I... Uh... Richard, I mean, Mr. Rhinelander, I, I just can't tell you how sorry I am. Well, sorry about what? Oh, well, bringing you down here and having you meet people like Al and Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> oh, Richard, you shut up, you rimsy Korsakoff. Well, Jane, you've nothing to be sorry about. I'm delighted. As a matter of fact, I was about to tell you how grateful I am for this wonderful evening and this opportunity to meet Al. Oh, thank you for that vote of confidence. We're gonna have plenty of action together. Gee, I'm so happy for you, Mr. Rhinelander. Now you can have security. <laughs> Richard, I, I don't know what to say. Oh, don't say anything. Well, I've got to run along now. I want to talk this whole deal over with Father. Goodbye, Irma. Goodbye, Jane, and thanks again for a wonderful evening. And Al, old man, I'll see you in the morning. We're going to have plenty of action. Plenty of action. I'll be there, partner. Well, I got to run now. Where are you going, honey? Where am I going? Now I got to see where I can get hold of some ripcord. <laughs> you see, Gene, how silly you were to worry? You've got to remember that all's well that ends well in the silver cloud. Oh, sister. I'm going to bed, Irma. Irma. Yes? Where are my pajamas? <laughs> See, I forgot to tell you. Forgot to tell me what? I gave them to Al for exploitation purposes. Oh. <laughs> my friend Irma. <laughs> Will Al get the rip cords? Will Richard Rhinelander's father okay the deal? Will Jane marry Richard? Will Irma louse up the works? We'll know next week at this same time when Columbia once again invites you to listen to My Friend Irma. <laughs>
Marie Wilson was starred as Irma, and Kathy Lewis is Jay. My Friend Irma was created and produced by Cy Howard. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.